Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and today I'm going to help you get started with your Ethernet modem. Ethernet modems are a great selection for receiving data from our enterprise wireless sensors. They allow you to receive transmissions from those sensors and then bring them into software applications that you develop. So we're just going to get started here. I'm not going to get real in-depth with software development or anything like that. I just want to help you get your Ethernet modem out of the box and working for the first time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the modem itself. Here I've got the Ethernet modem. It's in a really nice sealed enclosure, but I should note it is not watertight because we have these ingresses for the Ethernet cable and the power connection. We also have an antenna connection on this end. Now I should note, you want to connect this Ethernet modem to a DHCP enabled network. That is required for this initial quick start setup. You do not want to plug it into an unmanaged switch. You do not want to plug it directly into your computer. You want to plug it into a DHCP enabled network. You're also going to want a Windows computer connected to that same DHCP enabled network in order for this quick start guide to work. So we'll go ahead and start by connecting the ethernet cable and the power to this modem. First, I'll connect the ethernet cable to the modem. Next, I'm going to plug in the 12 volt DC power supply source to the modem. At this point, you can look at the uh, Ethernet connection here, and you'll actually see some LEDs. You should have a solid green LED and an amber LED that blinks once in a while. This will let you know that your Ethernet modem is powered up and is functioning. Lastly, we're going to want to go ahead and connect the antenna to the modem to give it a little better wireless range to monitor data from the sensors. Now the, for the purposes of today's uh, demonstration, I'm going to be using uh, this temperature humidity sensor. But I should note that this guide is going to work with any of the wireless sensors in our Enterprise Series lineup. So let's go ahead and get some software open for this device. Now the software I'm going to be using initially here is called AlphaStation. If you go to ncd.io and you search resources for AlphaStation, you'll find the AlphaStation Quick Start Guide. In this guide, you'll find download links for the AlphaStation software. AlphaStation is a great way to get started for the first time using your sensor. It's not intended for daily use applications, but it is a wonderful diagnostic tool and it can help you get some familiarity and comfortability with this line of products. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and launch the AlphaStation software. So here on my computer, I've got AlphaStation already installed, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch it. Now my Windows computer is connected to the same DHCP enabled network as the Ethernet modem. Here I'll find that the modem automatically appears right on my uh, window under Discovered Network Devices. So I'll select it and then I'll click OK. On the next window, I'm going to want to click on Sensor View and Setup. That's going to open the interface where I can view data coming from other sensors. Now we may see some data come in from other sensors as there are a lot of engineers working in our building. So let's go ahead and leave this up and now I'm going to switch my sensor on. So you're going to need to switch your sensor on whenever you receive it because by default they ship turned off. This helps preserve the batteries inside the sensor. I should also note I'm not going to install the antenna on the sensor. The sensor and the modem are in too close a proximity to have the antenna installed on both devices. I only recommend installing the modem on both or the antenna on both devices if they're at least 10 feet apart. So I'm going to go ahead and open the lid to my sensor here and I'm going to locate the switch, the power switch inside the sensor. It should be located approximately right here. You want to flip this switch towards the wall of the enclosure. All right, now let's see if we got anything in Alpha Station. And there we go. We get the air quality sensor popped up right here in Alpha Station. Looks like somebody else is working with the soil moisture sensor. So if we click on it, we can highlight it blue and we can click on view. Now it'll tell us that it's waiting for the next transmission. So I can go ahead and force a transmission from the sensor by simply pressing the R button inside the sensor.
And there we'll see we actually got data right in our software. We can take a look at the temperature, the humidity, the pressure. You'll notice gas resistance doesn't come up. It gives you a warning here that says the sensor needs to warm up for 30 minutes before uh, you can get gas readings, which is normal for this device. So if you got this far, then your sensor is working properly and your Ethernet modem is working properly. So for most applications, this is about all you need to do, as long as you're connecting it to a DHCP-enabled network and you don't need to change anything. You're going to connect to it from your software or the application that you develop. This is as far as you need to go with the Quick Start Guide. But now we'll dive a little bit deeper into some things that you can do with the device. So the Ethernet modem will actually allow you to configure things like static IP addresses. It'll allow you to connect as a client to software applications. So let's say your server application is going to run uh, on a computer and the Ethernet modem should connect to your server as a client. Uh, we can do that. In this configuration, the uh, Ethernet modem is actually acting as the server device and your software would be acting as the client. Uh, and that would be over a TCP socket connection. So let's go ahead and see a little bit of what we can do with this Ethernet modem as far as advanced configurations. And I'd like to bring your attention to the NCD5500 configuration tool. Now if you go to ncd.io and you search resources for NCD5500, you're going to find the NCD5500 user guide. That user guide is going to have a download link for this configuration tool. This is a piece of Windows software that allows you to configure settings in the Ethernet modem. It's possible to configure settings through the web interface on the Ethernet modem, but whenever possible, I highly recommend using this software as it's just a little more reliable. So let's open it up and take a look. So after we open the software up, we'll see it actually already discovered our device right here. And we can see its MAC address. You can also find the MAC address of your modem by opening the box and reading the uh, MAC address printed right here on top of the Ethernet interface module. So here we'll see some advanced uh, configuration settings. Um, we can tell it to use a static IP address by switching to uh, this option, use the following IP address. That allows us to enter an IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and DNS server. Uh, I'm going to leave it to DHCP for my purposes. Uh, I don't really ever recommend that you change these COM port settings. This will break the communication between the Ethernet module and the wireless module inside the Ethernet modem. Uh, here we have the connection. Right now we have it working as a TCP server. As I said earlier in this configuration, the Ethernet modem is the server and your software is the client. If you want to change that, you can make this device the TCP client and you can tell it a remote IP address and port to connect to. This would be the IP address of the computer that's running your software and this would be the port that your software is listening on. You can also change it to UDP so that you can get data from the device via UDP. So if we have it as TCP server, we'll see that the port is 2101. So you want to make sure that your software is connecting to the device's IP address over port 2101. <clears throat> There's some more advanced options here that allow you to do a little more uh, stuff to, to, be, to be vague. Um, Nagel wait time is the amount of time that it waits before s between serial packets. Most generally, you don't need to change this. Um, clear data buffer when TCP is connected. That just says that, you know, uh, whenever your software connects to it, uh, the Ethernet modem is going to clear anything it had previously. Um, so for the most part, you're not going to need to change any of these settings. Uh, I recommend consulting with NCD staff before making any uh, changes here. Uh, for instance, inactivity milliseconds. Um, this is the amount of time the device will leave a TCP socket connection open before it forcibly closes it. So, you know, if your software were to crash and didn't close the socket properly, you could set this to something like five seconds, and then you could have your software send a keep alive message to the Ethernet modem every two seconds. 
And then if the modem didn't receive uh, a keep live packet from your software, it could automatically forcibly disconnect that TCP socket connection. Um, of course, this could cause some problems if you weren't accounting for it in your software. Uh, keep Alive is going to allow the device to, uh, the Ethernet modem to send a Keep Alive message to the client or the server that it's connected to. So you can set it to uh, send a Keep Alive every so often. If these options are set to zero, then they are disabled. Um, and that's really about all that you need to know here. This allows you to upload firmware to the device should you need to update the firmware in the module. I can say that the firmware is very stable right now and there are no uh, projected uh, feature changes at this moment. Um, so you more than likely don't need to do anything with that either. Most of the things that you're going to want to do with this is more than likely configuring a static IP address into the device. Now, as I said, it is preferable that you use the NCD config tool to configure settings into your modem. However, it is possible to do it through the web interface on the module. So let's take a look at that. Now, to find the uh, IP address of your modem, really the easiest thing is to just open up the Alpha Station software and wait for the device to appear in the Discovered Network Devices list here. We'll see it appeared, and its IP address is 192.168.1.2 on my network. So I can simply go to 192.168.1.2. It's going to ask me for a password. And I just uh, enter admin a couple times. And this is the uh, web interface for configuring settings. So, you know, you've got uh, some basic settings here. Uh, pretty much everything that you could do through the, uh, through the configuration tool, you can do here. So this is just an alternative, like, you know, perhaps you're on a Linux computer or a Mac computer and uh, can't run the Windows software. This is sort of a way around that uh, that will allow you to configure some settings. Also, sometimes uh, installation is restricted by some companies, so this is a workaround. So I hope you found this video useful and instructional. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to help you. Just hit us up on community.ncd.io, and we'll be happy to do anything we can to help. So thank you for watching, and take care.